You're listening to the Youth Creek Podcast on KHZ Network. Find us on Facebook at Decibel UNG Radio and find us on Twitter at Decibel UNG. If you like this episode, please leave a like and comment on our iTunes page so at KHZ Network. Scrolls are the bad guys. And now for the podcast. And you're a Cree, a race of noble warriors. Heroes. Noble warrior heroes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Youth Critic Reacts. I'm your host, Kel Smith. And today we are going to be talking about Marvel's 21st feature film, Captain Marvel. So now that we are 21 films into the MCU, or Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, we finally have our first female led marvel movie 21 movies guys for those who don't know captain marvel is about veers or later in the movie known as carol danvers and her uh basically journey to uh, from a cree soldier of a paramilitary group to essentially a warrior that basically is a defender of for the of the galaxy from the accusers the cree and other <clears throat> and other people that will cause harm to uh the known galaxy so in going into this movie um i will try and stay away from politics i think that's I think I think now we've gotten the politics out of the system. Um, I think Brie Larson has made her statement, and I think it's perfectly fair. Um, maybe, and I think that you know now that you know now that we're two weeks out from you know the movie, we can kind of go through spoilers and go more in depth into the movie. So, um, and also uh, the reason why it's taken two weeks to get. Um, this on KHZ Network is because A, I've been trying to find a person and then, you know, the couple people I tried to just were too busy and then um, I didn't really want to do um, another male co-host um, because, again, I feel like this should have been, this podcast really should have been, you know, very fem- should have been a more female-centric podcast. However, I couldn't get... Um, anyone to join in on the discussion with me so and i thought it would be more kind of um i thought it'd be more inquisitive if i just gave my own thoughts and then just kind of moved on especially since now that the new avengers in-game trailer is out and people are pretty much like captain marvel who um so with that uh so my thoughts on the movie going just very blankly it's really good. Um, I don't think it's top five Marvel yet. Um, although I've seen this movie twice now, and both times I've really enjoyed it. I've really loved the story. I loved, you know, Carol. I've loved. Um, I, I I've been a big fan of this movie. A really huge fan, especially of like the sci-fi nature of it. The um, kind of, I kind of said this in a tweet when I first came out. This is very much uh, Star Trek meets the MCU, or or basically the Star Trek meets the MCU with some little flavors here and there of Blade Runner, um, and I, and I think and I think it was a very smart decision to go in this direction, and I think also to kind of tell a more science fiction story in a world where we have someone who goes to this, you know, who shrinks themselves down to the size of a bug or, you know, or a guy who's given super soldier serum, serum <laughs> um, or um, a doctor who becomes uh, a master in the mystic arts. Uh, I think to do a very science fiction kind of anthology-esque story I think is very appropriate to to do and and now in the MCU like let's not just do a fully grounded story let's do a you know full fledged science fiction story. Uh, not saying any of those are not, but there is a certain amount of you know let's keep this grounded. Let's keep this in a stated of 
you know, let's keep this in, in a grounded setting to all a lot of the Marvel movies, especially one with the Mystic Arts guy. Um, the only other thing I really wasn't that huge on uh, on the movie was that I really wasn't huge. It's very kind of nitpicky stuff. I feel like it's. You know, I feel like the ending with, you know, it really feels like you are just watching a CGI double of Carol Danvers fighting the end, uh, fighting the spaceships and the battleships and the nuclear warheads. It's a very crazy and culminating, cul culminative uh, climax. However, it, however, you just can't help, or I couldn't help watching the movie and being like, yeah, I'm just watching a CGI Carol Danvers in her full, what what's the, in her full like you know peak of power and um in and also in her peak of character, I just can't help but be like, yeah, I'm just watching CGI uh, Brie Larson <laughs> uh, fight <clears throat> um, fight warships and whatnot. Because a the CGI around on her is pretty off is pretty awful. It's not. It doesn't even. And also, it at times it doesn't even look like Brie Larson at all. So, yeah, it doesn't look great. And then the other thing is, and I think um, actually the KHZ net, uh, network uh, creator host, when I talked to him about it, Jordan Hood, I think Jordan kind of said it best in that, and I am tr going to try to make this exact quote as much as possible, um, what Jordan said was, you know, this is a really good origin story, but we're, you know, but for an MCU movie in this late in the game, we're kind of too late on the origin stories, which I kind of get like, yes, you know, we're going to go through kind of a rebooted version of the MCU after Endgame in, uh, Far From Home. However, I can't, I can't like disagree with that because I can't, I can't disagree with that because, we're 20 movies in and we're like near a culminating almost finale like ending with Avengers Endgame and we're now getting a, another origin story again with Carol Danvers especially since um Spider-Man did a really good Spider-Man did a really good job of not being an origin story and even Black Panther itself did a really good job of not being um a full-fledged or and even Black Panther was not an origin story so I so I can't help but agree that yeah it was maybe the wrong choice but then again when you deal with a character as powerful as Captain Marvel you're gonna run into, you run into that same problem that you have with Thor a character that's also very powerful and can do a lot of stuff how do you make that character relatable in her first movie and not run into the same problems of you know she's you know, just and, and run into those same problems. How do you kind of make humanize someone that powerful? And the choices they made work thematically to what they are doing. However, in the long run, it doesn't. Uh, it it still feels too little, too late to be. You know, to be doing an origin story of Carol Danvers slash Captain Marvel this late in the game uh, especially when we're so close to a culminating finale um uh other than that uh i other than that i really love the movie uh, every now and then the cg faces like the de-aging de faces um especially on um colson don't really look that good <laughs> Because they invested so much on um, making Sam Jackson look amazing, which really, Sam. To be fair to the, which to be fair to everyone, Sam Jackson's like barely aged in like the last twenty five years. So it, you know, it wasn't like a Herculean task, or it wasn't like doing um, Jeff Bridges to in Tron Legacy to. Um, <laughs> Uh, it wasn't like doing Jeff Bridges and Tron Legacy, essentially. So, um, it wasn't that Herculean task. So, um, I, but 
But going back kind of to what I love about the movie, what I loved about this movie is basically the plot twist, and I love how it all kind of works thematically. So the movie is very much thematically, not necessarily an anti-war movie, as critics and a lot of people have kind of pointed out. It's more of an anti-imperialistic film, which uh, Marvel's been doing a lot of lately. Marvel's been doing kind of, but in kind of a retroactive kind of way in that the characters are dealing with the uh, the ramifications of the colonizing that the previous generations have done. Like, very much so in the way that uh, Black Panther or T'Challa is having to deal with it from what uh, T'Chaka had done in the past and also uh, what uh, Odin had done previously in order to secure basically the, you know, Norse uh, landscape in the galaxy. Um, but here, uh, the imperializing is still going on. Uh, the Kree are very much imperializing the uh, scrolls, and thus that's caused the war. Um, or I guess it's not necessarily the Kree themselves, it's very much the accusers, Ronan's, uh, Ronan the accusers uh, group. Um, that's what they're, uh, that is what, and that's, and and that's in in Veers at the time, or Veers is very much involved in that imperialistic moment, but in a but not necessarily in a way that is of her own choice. She f is manipulated into this um, decision to basically join up with the the Cree, this kind of Cree military group um, to fight alongside to f to fight against or fight against the scrolls. And that's basically, you know, been her mission until um, she arrives on Earth when the plot kind of kicks in. And that's when she starts to also gain back her memory. Um, by the way, she has no memory. When we meet her, she has no memory of her past. So again, making it a lot easier to manipulate, like, a, a lot easier for the Kree to manipulate um, her into basically joining in on this mission. And and that's really what the and that's really what the theme is. And some people have been like it's anti-war, but it's a very much a but the air force is very much huge, you know, signifying you know force in the movie, kind of making it almost an ad. I I think directors Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck kind of play that line very well, of not being like the air force is amazing, but they kind of but. But also, we're an anti-war movie. That's not. I don't think they're, you know, having conflicting ideas. I think they, you know, do enough to basically be like, this is Carol's, you know, journey. She's been one. She's been up trying to prove all of her peers that she is, you know, worthy and willing to do anything. And that's been her journey until she realizes I don't have to prove anything to people. I don't have to prove anything. I only had to prove you know, myself to others and, and to have value in my own self. And so it has all, so the movie has all these like different journey marks and all the char and it all builds to great character stuff. All the, especially in the second act where we basically get a buddy movie with Nick Fury and um, Carol as they go across the country, you know, trying to piece together her memory and also try to piece together like why she is so important to both the scrolls and to the Kree. And and on top of that, it all leads to a very, very good twist. Uh, that the scrolls are basically the good people and they are just refugees that are just looking for they're looking for a home through the uh, Wendy Larson played by Annette Benning. They're trying to find the Lightspeed Tech that she's trying to, that she was trying to make in order to send um, Skrull refugees off to another planet so they can be safe away from the accusers. And that's what I, and ultimately it builds to the theme of, again, it's in, it builds to the theme of anti imperializing and trying to get everyone away. And I don't know, I love the twist. And I think. <laughs> For the, you know, for as good as this movie is, I love that Ben Mendelsohn 
you know, does at first try to play a villain, and then it twists on the character to make him a good guy. Uh, I, I just found it kind of interesting. I think all of it kind of leads to an interesting finale, interesting twist. Um, again, the only thing I wished um, more was I wish the finale was just more, wasn't just, you know, her just showing off her peak powers and being, uh, and just being full-fledged CGI. I wish there was more impact to the finale. I wish there was more, but I mean, I get it. I mean, Ronan still has to be in this MCU for another 20 years. So, so the Guardians can, you know, get him in Guardians of the Galaxy Again, oh, speaking of Ronan, I find it kind of funny that Ronan the Accuser is now in two MCU movies as a villain, but he's still, like, ironically the weakest villain because, in, in a good way because he's ultimately, you know, basically the equivalent of a terrorist, um, of a nationalistic terrorist. Um, however... Everything he does to try and, you know, take over the galaxy or every time he, you know, tries to, you know, you know, Im imperialize or try to <laughs> impose his own view views on, you know, planets of the galaxy, it always just, you know, f blows up in his face <laughs> in the most, like, you know, by some of the, like, you know, most goofiest characters in the MCU I mean, he's ba I mean, in Guardians of the Galaxy, he's killed. He's thwarted by um, a doofus. No, two doofuses, um, a, ra a, a a walking tree, and a raccoon, and Thanos' stepdaughter. Essentially, he's he's thwarted by a bunch of doofuses in the Guardians of the Galaxy. So I, I always kind of like that Ronan is just like, I'm a bad person, and I want. To take over the world, and then he's thwarted by you know, by some, some by the goofiest characters in the MCU. So I, I always kind of appreciate again how just like pathetically ironic Ronan. They always make Ronan the accuser as. Um, other than that, I really love Captain Mar. I really love Captain Marvel. I don't know if it's top five for me. I still think you know the first two Guardians, Black Panther, Iron Man three. And even um, the Avengers are still going to be in my top five for the time being. But I really, really like the character of Carol Danvers. I loved, I, I really love the story. It's engaging. It's fast. The only thing I would probably maybe at, want more of in the future is, you know, to see more development. See more of how, uh, more of her backstory. Because to me, that was even more interesting to see, you know, how she was always a character that got pushed down, told no, and she's a character that, you know, that basically lived to spite her, you know, her doubters. And to me, I think that's the most, you know, you know, incredible example of a human spirit you could possibly have. Not just of the female spirit, but uh, but of the human experiences to live to basically, you know, tell your doubters no I can do this I can you know persevere and move on and move past your you know doubts and defy your expectations so I loved so I, I really like Captain Marvel it's a really fun movie um it is a little <laughs> it is a little odd though <laughs> you know we're in six seven weeks we're gonna get another um uh, MCU movie <laughs> um right after this one so it is a little odd but i mean uh but yeah i i was very happy with this one i can't wait the two end credit scenes are fine one's probably gonna be in avengers endgame who knows they russo's have been kind of faking us out you know for the last year so who knows um anyway that's all my thoughts on captain marvel um Thanks everyone for listening. Uh, if you want to know more or follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at Movie Kale. You can also follow the show at The Youth Critic, and then you can also follow the channel that distributes this podcast at KHC Network. 
Thanks everyone. We'll be back with you very soon for another react episode to Rupert Wyatt's Your life began the day it nearly ended. We found you. With no memory, we made you one of us. So you could live longer, stronger, superior. You were reborn. I keep having these memories. Something in my past is the key to all of this. You know how to fly this thing? We'll see. That's a yes or no question. Yes. Would you like to know what you really are? I think I had a life here. What aren't you telling me? You've come a long way. But you're not as strong as you think. This war is just the beginning. I'm not gonna fight your war. I'm gonna end it. Aren't you the cutest little thing? Aren't you cute? And what's your name, huh? Gary. What's you? I'll be back.